Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today I'm here with Rupan the third the woman called Fujiko Mine episode 12 and 13 reaction I'll be reacting to both the episodes and uh, yeah this will be the end this uh, this reaction will be the end of the series now I'm going to talk about uh, in the discussion section later about like you know what I plan on doing with Rupan from here onwards because uh, most of the things I've watched there's a few movies that I haven't watched I'll, I'll talk about that later for now I'll react to first I'll react to episode 12 immediately I'll react to episode 13 then I'll do the discussion um, at the end of for both the uh, episodes so yeah that is how I'm going to do this so let's get started then uh, this is episode 12 so oh uh, I forgot to mention what happened in the previous episode what happened was basically um, the whole thing with Oscar that happened where Oscar was trying to imitate Fujiko and uh, you know like Zenigata it, it, it was kind of hinted in the end that Zenigata maybe he realized maybe he didn't realize that it was Oscar that was doing it but you know Zenigata saying that thing to Oscar in the end made him snap out of it and he was going to like destroy the whole bridge and everything but he decided to go and stop it and then jumped into the water with uh, the bomb itself and uh, yeah and I think that's that's it for him you know because yeah um so and and while all of that was happening uh, Fujiko found out in the TV that you know like now in his her head um like he like she's thinking of like i don't know what's going to happen like you know like it, it kind of went into her head that she has to kill herself not herself in that sense but she has to kill fujiko mine but fujiko mine is her so you know yeah i don't know what's going to happen about with that though so let's see what happens episode uh, 12 at first let us begin i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's begin okay here's the countdown three two one Go. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Okay, this is her past again. Oh my god, these sound effects. Damn. Oh god. Ah. A woman named Fujiko in part 1. Okay. Bella's inheritance. Who's this? Oh, oh is, is that person like his assistant now? Oh, that's Fujiko. Ooh. 
Who's? Whoa. Damn. All right. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Re re Serial. Hmm. Because all of them are. Oh, an artwork of a painting. Subject there. Okay. Well. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Well, yeah, he said the treasure for, you know. Hmm. Oh, um, we're here. But damn, this place is big. What the hell? It's huge. This good God. Yep, it's a freaking owl, obviously. Oh wow, nice. Right, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, well her... Oh, House of Fujiko. Ugh. What the hell? Yeah. Oh. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay, she's remembering now stuff. Yep. Now that she's back here. Oh, okay. Oh boy. Yeah, well.
Oh Gott. Oh mein Gott, well. Great, now what? Oh. Oh, the gas in the sky is like the, the lab or something like that. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh god. Oh, dude, these two. <laughs> yep. Well, obviously. Ice cream! <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh my god! Hey yo, nah, man. The throw that away. Ah. Yeah. I see. Okay, so that was his task from the very beginning. Okay. Never existed in the world. Okay. No. Yeah, okay. Like, she's dead to everyone. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're already in inside the hole. <laughs> Recurring characters. Right. Ooh. Hmm. Mm. Different. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, God damn. Well, he didn't even let Lu Rupan answer, so, you know. Oh, he's, he got into the... Okay. Oh, my God! <laughs> Bro, at least let him answer. He didn't even give any answer now. <laughs> well, you're here already, so, you know.
Oh, yeah, so he's also in... Exactly, he knows, he, he knows everything, so... He is involved. From the very beginning, he got involved. <clears throat> Bruh. Oh! Oh no. <laughs> Good god. Wow. Right, so he got captured. Great. Well, obviously, there's too many of them. And this whole freaking. What the? Hey, yo, what? No. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I doubt that's the exit. Even though it's written. Well. Oh god, well, this is like some kind of score? Okay. Uh. Yeah, well, obviously. Mm, that is why she became a thief and like she goes for the treasure. Mm. Yeah, and that's it's getting coming back now little by little. Oh god. Whoa, is that a bo what the? <clears throat> well, we'll see about that. Hmm. Like, here's the thing. I'm also very confused, like, why did he see all of that? Good God. Damn! Whoa! Oh yeah. He did say that. Oh lord. Oh. 
Oh no, what? Oh my god, what the hell? Oh, they're people! No, what? No, what's happening? Why are they bleeding? What? Oh yeah, they are people! Oh, that's why they were like trying to put makeup on Goemon. That, oh, this is oh my god, what the hell? To just to bring um, Fujiko's memory back. <laughs> oh god, bruh. Oh, is he going to break the whole... Th uh, yeah. Nice! Good. No. Oh, is she going to try to go and set things straight now? Wait. Oh, is it? It's is is that Oscar? Whoa! So he survived. They 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 took. Oh my God! I wasn't expecting that. So they saved him from the. Oh, there he is. Oh, God. Uh, well, that was... Okay, yeah, well, things make sense now, what's happening and, you know. So, these were all, like, keys planted by him trying to bring back Fujiko's memory, which he sealed within herself. And that's why he needed Rupan and everyone else. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, that was episode 12. Now let me go to episode 13. I'll react to this first and then I'll talk about the whole thing together. Okay, so episode number 13. Let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is a preference. Let's begin. Okay, here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. <clears throat>
Well, the opening makes way more sense now, now that I'm listening to it and reading it. Hmm. Well, part two. Wait, did he like put a transmitter on her or something? <laughs> well, squirrel. Oh, he is using the. Oh God, that's just reverting back again. Yeah, she's trying to, like, conquer her past, so... Her past, or... Oh, there he is. Now he, she can see him properly. Up until now, it's just the uh, owl. What? Well, there you go. That's the... Wait. Oh, wait, that was just a... Oh my god. Was that all hypnotism or some? Oh my god, wait, what is happening? So this, this was just a... Someone else has been doing... Oh god. Yeah. Right. Oh god, this is bad. Calm down. Uh, okay. Great. Yeah. Oh god. Oh yep, there you go. So he knew that it was Oscar that that boy who he saved. Whoa, what? The Oh, Jigen is, uh, Goemon is here. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. 
<laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Wait, the whole... Oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> He's also seeing him as an owl. <laughs> oh yeah, he can just cut it. There you go. What the hell? Some kind of elevator is that? No, what is Oh! What is this? Some video game level? What the hell? What is. Right. Maybe you have. Oh, that's how they talk. Wait, wait, is this like... <sighs> Whoa, what? Who's that? Wait, so it wasn't Fujiko? Oh my god! I wasn't expecting that. That girl, the vision that she's seen, that wasn't her. That's someone else, this person. This person is the one who we have been seeing in the flashbacks. I think so, that's what's happening. Tracks her eye movements. Oh. I think I, I'm correct. That's what's happening. Okay. Maybe alteration through intense brainwashing. What, and one was this girl. This isn't Fujiko. There you go. Yep, I was correct. So, Fuji was brainwashed to think that she was her. Or, like, then why? Okay, wait a minute. Uh, why uh, was she doing this then? Aisha, I think that's her name. Oh! Damn! Okay. God. <laughs> what the who's the This guy's back again. Minerva's out. The mask and comic accident. Okay. Must have ever done. Oh. So her dad didn't disable his phone.
Oh my god. Left her bedridden. And he just died. Okay. But she's too far gone by that time. Like, what? She, how is she going to live free now after all of this? Hmm. Life of others. Oh boy, Oscar's still in the hole. Ay! Okay, well... Oh, is she trying to make Fujiko into herself? Something like that he's trying to... Her memories, um, there you go. So he's, she's run the fear of master in their minds. Ah. I see, so Fujiko is the only one that, that is why the, the kidnappings, the serial, Yeah, Fujiko probably came here for some mission to steal something uh, and she got trapped in this whole thing. And that's why she's trying to unlock it to develop hatred towards and try to relieve your problem. On the surface. Yeah, I, I was saying, like, she probably came here to, to try to steal something. Oh, she found it out. Well, the title. Whoa! Oh my god.
Damn. Mm. Yeah. Wait. Wasn't mentioned in the, the wife? Uh, yeah. Okay, I was going to say like the doctor was there. Where was the wife? Mm, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, that's why that's when he realized. Hmm. Yeah, so the father didn't know about anything. Oh, but he still okay, wait. So okay, that defeats the whole purpose then. So he okay. But that made it even worse. Bruh. Yeah, a lot of other people as well. Hmm. You cannot do anything. Ugh. Well, yeah, she used to see the world through Fujiko's eyes up until now. So, you know, her seeing that Fujiko's freedom and her having fun would make her content as well yeah like ah <laughs> Oh yeah, they're still stuck there. Well, he'll, he'll come back. <laughs> they're still fighting. Hey, oh my god, this... <laughs> ah, there you go. Alright, the, the effects of the drugs, like, it... It went out. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Iya. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, this is interesting because you know I'll talk about this in the discussion section. Oh my god, she took out. That's why the whole car all broke down. <laughs> okay, so interesting because I. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll talk about this later. Let me let me watch this to its entirety first. <clears throat> Okay, what happened to Oscar and Zenigata? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> well, there he is. Oh, Lupin is just walking because of the car, yeah. Okay, there you go. And that was it. So, this is an interesting thing that I want to talk about. I was very curious because I was like, okay, so here we get to know about Fujiko's dad, how, how she was like, you know, brought up as a child, all these things we get to know here. And I was like, oh, is this like some kind of a different version of, like, you know, because Rupan has different like versions, like of the story, like each as far as I can, like, you know, as, as I remember, each, like, season has, like, their own, like, nobody knows what Rupan's past is, neither Fujiko's past, there's been different, like, stories to it, like, and different, like, way of, like, telling each and everyone, like, each and everyone has, like, a different past in a different se uh, season that I see, you know, so I was thinking, like, oh, is this something like that, like, another alteration to the main thing, but now that we got to see these two episodes, we realize that it wasn't Fujiko at all from the very beginning that kid was Aisha so she was just Fujiko was just just came here to steal something just like she usually does and and that's what happened and and so that means all the parts that we saw it wasn't Fujiko's parts so this is very much like this can you can put this in the you know like like in in the main storyline in a way because it, it kind of like follows the exact way the whole thing goes i guess because you know like i was like okay so this is like a different version because we literally get to see fujiko's dad and everything no that wasn't the case that means so okay that's very interesting because yeah like it makes way more sense now um and uh, not only that obviously like since this was in this show at least this was how rupan and fujiko met as we saw after this whole like thing <laughs> as we saw in the end rupan you know in the end was like the whole like oh fujiko chan like you know that the way she he kind of does it all the time <laughs> he started like you know like like speaking like that in the end so it kind of like you know like i guess it, it you, you can put it like you know like it kind of falls into place how like you know like Fu like rupan became so obsessed with fujiko and so okay this this you know like you can put this in the whole storyline in, in a way like it, it kind of fits in that sense because i was thinking this is going to be something completely different because you know like fujiko had a past you know we get to see her dad and everything but now that we know that's not her past that's someone else's past fujiko was just fujiko from the very beginning i'm like oh so okay this isn't something different this is kind of the same you know, like I was ready to put this in a completely different category of Rupan because this Rupan has like a has like a completely different setting where f we get to know Fujiko's past and everything. But no, we still don't know anything about Fujiko's past. That's the funny thing in the end. You know, like <laughs> all the things that we have been seeing up until now wasn't Fujiko, it was Aisha. And, uh, you know, like 
Fujiko's story begins from when she came here to steal that thing. Right. And everything that we are seeing, all the past, like, you know, like experimentation and everything, that was all Aisha. That wasn't Fujiko. She just, like, put that in Fujiko's brain. And that is it. Um, right. So, yeah, like, that was a good twist. I wasn't expecting that in the end. Like, genuinely. I, I was thinking, like, oh, we're going to go in and fight Almay, uh, Count Al... What was his name? Almay, that's something. Um, Luis, Luis, or whatever his name was. I was like, oh, we're going to fight him and everything. And then Fujio comes in and shoots the thing off of his head. And I was like, oh, yeah, finally, now we can see underneath the... Um, um, oh, another thing. Uh, right. So, yeah, uh, like I was thinking, I was like, oh, now we can see underneath the mask. We can see the original person. And then I realized, wait a minute, that's a, that's a dead body. Like, what? Then what's happening? Who is doing this? And, you know, like, and then, I, I don't know, like, when she went into that room where those things are coming out and uh, Aisha was talking through those things, I was like, wait, so she, like, the, the person who is doing this is, like, she, she kind of freaked out when uh, Rupan said something about, like, oh, your dad will punish you or something. And she freaks out. I'm like, wait, so, like, that's a girl on the other side. Like, who is that? And then when I saw her in the bed that is when everything clicked i was like oh my god that means this the story that we've been saying up until now wasn't fujiko's past or anything it was this girl's story and this girl probably somehow hypnotized fujiko into and, and that's exactly what she did and it makes sense why she did it because like her plan was as we get to know from the ending where they kind of explain her plan was not her plan i would say but the whole story went like this um the count and like this girl's dad and his family lived, you know, in the same place since the dad and the wife were doing it like the experimentation and everything. They were like staff members under Lewis. Um, they and their family were staying here. And Count Lewis somehow convinced the dad into making her daughter an experimental subject. Now, there's one part that I was kind of thrown off. I was, I thought like when they were like, giving out the story, I thought like, Oh, so Count Louis, after the guy died, after the dad died, he, he, he manipulated the girl and like, you know, took, took her under him and started doing the experimentation. I was like, oh, so the dad wasn't at fault. But no, the dad was at fault. You know, yeah, like the dad didn't realize that this was going to go in this degree, but he still did give up her own, his own child to be like, like test subject in an experiments. That in itself is wrong. So, yeah, like, he was at fault from the very beginning. So, yeah, so the dad and the mom also, I guess she didn't say anything, which is very, like, you know, like, it, it's, it, it's similar as committing the same sin. Like, if you, if you do something bad, obviously it's bad. But if you let that bad thing go on, especially in a situation like this, where the person who's getting affected is literally your child, yeah, you're, a, you're, you're at wrong as well. You know, like how Fujiko said in the end, like, you, you didn't do anything. And you just sat there and now you're trying to like, you know, like do some kind of um, like comp like, you know, like you're, you're trying to um, what was that word? Um, I forgot that word, you know, like when you do something to um, repent, repent. Yeah. Now you're trying to repent for your sins in this twisted way. You know, like you're you're not fit as a parent, as she said. And yeah, that's true. You know, like the dad obviously was in the wrong. He was the one who allowed this thing to happen. And then the mom also was like, didn't say anything. So both of them were at fault. And so, yeah, that's what happened. She like was led into the, the whole experimentation thing. Then the dad died. And, you know, then what happened was um, Louis was able to uh, do more experimentations on her. And she became this like this completely like, you know, broken person. Um, and then when Louis died, he, she was too far gone. And by that time, uh, you know, she was like, she, she wanted to see the outside world and everything. And that is why what she started to do was keep continuing the experimentation and make people into like an ideal version of herself so she could live her life through them. That was her plan. 
You know, and that's why she was like, like we saw the serial kidnappings. That was why that was happening. She kidnapped girls, boys, everyone, brought them in, you know, led them into experimentation, hypnotized them into like, you know, like it took into like her, like in a way, like went them, let them go through the same pain that she went through. And then she um, um, tried to like detach them, like gave them freedom. And she saw how they reacted. And she realized that a lot of, like, most of them didn't react in a good way. Like, someone, like, jumped off a building and everything and, like, and went in all wrong direction. And then, like, came in Fujiko. Fujiko came here as a maid to steal something, but she got captured. You know, she, as always, we know what Fujiko does. She comes in, steals the stuff, uh, gets close to the main person, steals it and just goes away. That's what she said, does. And that's what she did here as well. She came in. She, you know, like she realized probably what was going on. And then when she went in, you know, to confront the main person, that is Lewis, she got captured there. And then she was experimented upon. And, you know, then after experimentation, she was given freedom. And as we saw, what Fujiko did, or at least what she thought that Fujiko did, was that Fujiko stored the memories of like the trauma of the whole experimentation and everything that she went through because you know she hypnotized Fujiko into like you know like her like and so all the memories that Fujiko was seeing was her memories so that's what she did and you know like so Aisha thought that Fujiko's like repressing the memories that yeah she was repressing the memories but she thought that what she did after that that is stealing and everything all that stuff you know, that she was doing, she thought that was how she got her freedom. You know, that was as a, like a countermeasure to her past trauma. But as Fujiko says, like, no, that was me from the very beginning. I am, a, I am a thief. I'm the thief from the very beginning. I came here to steal something, you know. So it's not as if because of all of that and because I was given freedom, I acted like that. I was like that from the very beginning. You know, that is me, the woman called Fujiko Mina, as she says in the end um so yeah and and you know like and 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 she uh, aisha wanted to see the world and she was seeing the world through fujiko's eyes and she lived through fujiko up until now you know she that's how he got she got her freedom and now after coming here after all those keys like you know like clicking into place and everything you know like like making sense to her like fujiko after she gained her memories back you know like she yeah and and you can see that obviously like because she was under the hypnotization you know fujiko was so much affected by this but then when the hypnotization wore off and when she realized who she is herself you know fujiko gained back her confidence and just like how she was and i'm guessing like rupan kind of speaking at that moment kind of make her made her break out of it and little by little she realized um like you know like rupan said that you you are a person you're not this type of a person and uh, yeah okay so that that's very interesting because yeah up until now what we thought was Fujiko's past wasn't Fujiko's past it was just something like the Aisha like put in her and uh, yeah and uh, like Fujiko up until now she thought that was her but that wasn't her she was not Aisha from the at all from the very beginning she was Fujiko and you know when she regained all that memories she became she came back to her confident self and and here's another thing i feel like you know like 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 a question might pop up that oh if she was fujiko mina from the very beginning she never went through all of this why was she so traumatized you know and why was she so freaking out whenever her past came up or not her past but aisha's past came up in front of her i'm guessing that is because of the hypnotization because she completely thought that she was Aisha. And if you see, Aisha is very traumatized. You know, from a very young age, the way, things that she went through, you saw whenever someone brings out Louis's name, she freaks out. You know, whenever someone like says, oh, like, you know, Count Louis will be angry, you know, like, you, you're going to get your punishment, she freaks out completely, you know. And all that, like, you know, that stuff, you know, with the branding that she got in her leg, you know, the hot iron, that, that whole thing, you know, all the other shock therapy and everything that she went through. It probably like, you know, like it triggers her, it triggers that response whenever, you know, like something regarding, regarding count, uh, the count comes up and, you know, like, and if someone says like, oh, you're going to get punished, that, that triggers out, up. So that is Aisha. 
And she made sure that Fujiko thinks that she's her. You know, so all those like, you know, like, like everything, all those things were implanted in Fujiko. So Fujiko thought she was Aisha. And if she, Fujiko thought she was Aisha, Aisha's trauma, Aisha's um, response, her, the, the way she gets triggered by the PTSD and all that, that was replicated in Fujiko. And Fujiko thought of herself as her. So that is why she became so meek whenever the Count's name came up or whenever she was conf getting confronted with her past. That's why this happened. Even though she was Fujiko Mine, you know, she wasn't a type of person like that. You know, like, like I said, like we saw, Fujiko is not the type of person who is, who is going to get, um, like, who's going to get afraid of, like, like, you know, like something like this, or who's going to lose her confidence for something like this. But since she was hypnotized like that, she completely became Aisha. And that is why Aisha's feelings, Aisha's memories, Aisha's trauma, everything like was transferred to her as well. And she acted exactly as Aisha would act in that type of situation. But when she was able to realize to its entirety what is going on, she was able to break out of it. You know, and she took everything back into her hands. And that was, yeah, the, the biggest problem with this whole thing was that Fujiko went in and tried to um, like steal whatever she was trying to steal and she got trapped. Because like, here's the thing, we've seen this so many times in so many other, like, you know, um, what's the name? Uh, so many other series in Lupin that like Fujiko sometimes, you know, sometimes <laughs> like, like, like you can just count it, you know, that, uh, that's how few it is. Very few times she's able to completely like pull off like a like an actual thing like this but she succeeds by the end of it you know and most of the time she somehow messes up because of her you know like rash way of like you know like just jumping into and trying to tackle something I mean, we've seen like you know like she she because of her um you would say her greed of getting the treasure she always oversteps her boundaries every single time she does that you know, she, she goes in pretty smoothly, she's able to do everything, and then at the final section, she messes up. And every time that happens, somehow she gets captured, somehow, like, something happens, you know, and every single time, or most of the time, you know, sometimes she's able to get out of it on her own, but most of the time, Rupan comes in to help her out. We've seen that. And then she, after getting saved by Rupan, she betrays Rupan and then just goes away. This is, this is Rupan, this is what happens, you know. We've seen this so many times. So just imagine what would happen before Rupan was here. She she does stuff like this and now she messed up so bad that like this was like an extremely bad mess up. You know, like she was completely hypnotized into thinking she's completely someone else. She was almost gonna kill herself because of this. Like this was like one of the most the like, the biggest like like slip up that she, she went through, I think. In like a lot of like episodes I've seen in like you know like where Fujiko messes up and somehow gets you know like trapped in something or some dangerous situation. This is probably the worst one. Like she literally became a different person because of this. And you know like and again like you know in the end, you know, after meeting Rupan, she was able to regain back and now she's back to Fujiko Mine again. But <sighs> she didn't mess up, and this time it's pretty damn bad. Like, yeah, like there's no coming back from this, actually, unless and until she was able to break that whole thing, you know. But uh, there you go. Yeah. So in the end, we get to know Fujiko still. Fujiko, she was like that from the very beginning. The whole thing with Oscar is a bit like, you know, like it, it, it's kind of open ended. We don't know what the hell happened. Like, yeah, I'm sure Z Z Zenigata saved him. But I'm guessing he probably was taken and was now probably going to be admitted to a mental hospital or something i'm sure because you know like she he also went through that that brainwashing and uh, she has he has to get better um so yeah um that was that and while over there like you know jigen and goemon also had like a battle and now jigen is like hanging out with rupan goemon is just going on traveling the world and i'm sure they'll meet again you know so yeah it, it basically ended just like how rupan like, you know, like how Rupan like goes, like, oh, Jigen uh, and uh, Rupan is together from the very beginning. 
Like that is how we saw, like, you know, the very first few episodes of Rupan. That's how we, we saw it. Like, Jigen was there with Rupan, as far as I can remember. Guemon came in later, and Fujiko was just there, you know, in the background, coming and going now and then. Um, so that's exactly how it ended. You know, we see Jigen became good friends with Rupan, and now they're going to, you know, like, become partners. Um, Fujiko was able to break free of that whole hypnotization and now she's going to come back and forth, back and forth, come and go, come and go, that's what she's going to do. And Goemon is just Goemon, Goemon knows Fujiko and they'll meet, like, you know, they met Rupan as well. They're going to come, you know, like, and clash. We saw, like, in the very few episodes, in the very first few episodes of Rupan, as far as I can remember, Rupan and Jigen had a battle against Goemon. I think I remember that, you know. Um, and that's what's going to happen. And if you remember, the very first part of Rupan, as far as I can remember, Goemon really liked Fujiko, but then that little by little went away. <laughs> after she, after he realized that, nah man, this, this lady is too much. Uh, the only person who stuck around, like, stuck around was Lupan, you know, like, and Jigen as well, I think, kind, did kind of like Fujiko at the beginning, and then she, he started hating her, like, just absolute hate. <laughs> like she, like like Jigen went from one extreme to another, while Goemon little by little became disillusioned and started losing his interest and just started hanging around Rupan. But that is how it started, you know. Rupan and Jigen were together from the very beginning. Goemon comes and fights Rupan, you know, for Fujiko and all that stuff. And then little by little they start doing stuff together. And then little by little Goemon loses interest in Fujiko. Jigen starts hating Fujiko. While Rupan is still Rupan, just chasing Fujiko forever. And Fujiko's Fujiko just coming and doing her thing. And at the opposite, like at the, at the pro proper moment, completely betraying Rupan and just going away. <laughs> and then coming back again. <laughs> and Rupan continues. The whole Fujiko-chan, you know, like that whole thing. Mm, yeah. And there you go. That was, that was the whole thing. So, wow, I, I, I loved it, you know, because I wasn't expecting the ending to be like that. You know, I was thinking it was going to end in a generic way of like, oh, like, they'll fight Count, they'll defeat him, Fujiko will be able to break out of the whole thing happily ever after. I thought that was what was going to happen. In no way was I expecting this, that a completely different person will be introduced. Like Aisha, and she, was, she would be the one who, who was the victim here. And Fujiko was just someone who he... Who also became the victim, but Fujiko brought this under her own, you know, thing. She's the one who came to steal the whole thing. So it's completely, like, you know, like, her responsibility. Like, you cannot really say that, oh, Fujiko's also a victim. No, she wasn't a victim here. She, she brought this onto herself. And, you know, and I'm pretty sure she also knows that she's the one who went in. She's the one who took the risk. And she, she just, you know, like, got trapped into this whole thing. Um, but yeah, in the end, you know, like, she was able to sympathize with Aisha, because, you know, as we saw, like, Fujiko's the only, just like how Fujiko was the closest thing Aisha had to freedom, you know, I, uh, Fujiko also, like, got to know Aisha's whole story, her experiences, everything she was able to know through her own self, because she was hypnotized into it. So, you know, for Fujiko as well, Aisha was probably one of the closest people. So in the end, we can see that, you know, like Fujiko literally takes Aisha and goes off and decides to show her the true world and actual freedom, you know. And, and you can see in the end, it's not that she is showing Aisha that, oh, you know what, look at this, you can do this, you can do that. You can see that she's showing Aisha that she's having fun, that is Fujiko's having fun. And the reason why she did that, as far as I could understand, is that like we see, like Aisha lived his, her life through Fujiko. So seeing Fujiko have fun is automatically going to make her content as well, you know, and seeing it like through her own eyes. And in that way, I guess she was able to make Aisha content and, you know, she passed away. And obviously, like, you know, like you cannot survive like that. You know, we, we saw what type of situation she was in. And, you know, in no way after coming out of that castle, she would have survived. So, yeah, like, like Fujiko just gave her freedom in the end and yeah and in the end that part was pretty funny where <laughs> where Fujiko's like oh didn't you say Rupan that you're going to steal him and Rupan's like oh you're a bit sentimental today you know <laughs> and then she's like he's like 
But you know what? It doesn't matter. Even if you're sentimental, and she he starts his whole like the whole you know Fujiko Chan the way she he says that. But then the whole cart breaks down because Fujiko stole the the screw or whatever. Oh, bruh. Yeah, and then that part was funny as well when <laughs> Rupan's just walking. <laughs> Jigen comes in a truck and stops the truck, and Rupan gets in. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, and that was this episode. Wow, episode, um, it's interesting because episode 12, like, episode 12 also didn't really, like, tell us what's happening. What, what happens in episode 12 is that uh, Zenigata and um, Fujiko teams up, as you can see, and here we still think that Fujiko, this is Fujiko's past. You know, what we're getting to see, what's happening, this is all Fujiko's past, that we were still under that impression. Even Fujiko was under that impression. And, and then they come into this weird like theme park. And you know, like Fujiko goes through all of that. She's relieving all those memories, but she doesn't even know that's not her memories. That is Aisha's memories. So she went, goes through all of that. And then Rupan also comes in. And uh, you know, all that stuff happens. The whole battle happens between Rupan and that dude. And uh, then, you know, like, Goemon gets captured, Fujiko and Zenigata teams up to fight against all these things. And then Go Zenigata finds out that Oscar is there. Like, I don't know how Oscar survived. I, I guess it, it, she, she probably, like, when he dropped down into the water, I'm guessing, you know, like, somehow someone was able to bring him out. Of, like, those guys were probably, those owls were probably there. And they grabbed him and was able to bring him out immediately. And then took them in, took him in and hypnotized him. You know, and they were trying to hypnotize Goemon as well, but Goemon just cut everything. <laughs> oh boy. Right. And uh, yeah, and, and here as well, we still don't know. Like, you know, even in the ending scene where Fujiko comes in front of Count Louis, we still don't know. We are thinking that, oh, this is Fujiko's path. This is what Fujiko has to go through. Fujiko has to conquer her past and everything. And then bam, episode 13 comes up and the very beginning, you know, like we get to see when like, you know, they, Fujiko shoots the guy, the head comes up out and we see it's a dead body. And that's where everything is like, wait a minute, what is happening? You know, it's a dead one. Who is this person then? Someone is doing this from a distance. And then you're like, okay, something is happening. What's going on? And then everything clicks into place. Where, you know, like, Fujiko comes and into that room, you know, with the help of Rupan, they go up and they see that girl in the bed and all those, like, you know, like, the tubes are, like, stuck to her and she's, like, under life support. And that is where everything clicked. At least that is when it clicked in my head. And I'm like, oh, whoa, this is something else is happening. This isn't Fujiko's story. This is someone else's story. Fujiko's just living that story. Somehow, probably through hypnotization. And when Rupan says that, oh, your leg, it's, it's, it's fine. You don't have that brand, that, that mark. And that's why you're confirmed. You're like, yep, that, that wasn't Fujiko. This is someone else. And, you know, little by little, everything makes sense. There you go. Great episode, you know. This final episode completely turned everything upside down. I wasn't expecting that at all. That was, that was well executed. And I don't know, I, I, I never had any type of, like, you know, usually when there's like some kind of a twist like that, they kind of provide like little bits and pieces of hints and maybe, you know, like most of the time I feel like I get the feeling that, oh, something is wrong, something is going to happen, the whole thing is going to somehow get twisted some way or the other in the end. This show, at least no clue up until the very end. The ending, like, there was no, like, I had no, like, you know, like suspicion at all. Like, I genuinely, I genuinely thought this was going to end in a way where they'd be able to defeat Count, the Count, and yeah, it's over. Something like that. Never in my, like, you know, dreams did I expect, like, this is going to happen. Something like this. This type of a twist is going to come. Now, that was very well executed, like I said. They gave us no hints or no way to think or realize that, oh, something is wrong. I thought everything was fine. Everything was working, like, going normally. But yeah, now we know. Okay, and uh, and yeah, and there you go. That was it. That was my reaction to this episode. This is episode number. This is my reaction to episode twelve and thirteen, the final two episodes of Rupan the Third, the woman called Fujiko Mine. 
And before I end this, like, I'm going to say what I'm going to do with my Rufan reactions. Like, as you've seen, like, I've reacted to season one. I've reacted to a few episodes of season two and three. Um, I have reacted to the entirety of season four, five, six. I reacted to the woman called Fujiko Mine as well. I've reacted to Rupan Zero as well. I think that was called Zero, wasn't it? Like, I've been reacting to Rupan for a long time. Like, more than, like, one year, I feel like. Like, one and a half year or something. You know? So, for now, you know, like, most of the things I've done, except there's a few movies that I've still, like, you know, left. A few TV specials are still left. I'm going to take a little break off from Rupan, you know, for now. Uh, if some new season, like season 7 or something comes out, I'm definitely going to react to that. You know, if that happens, anything related to Rupan, if something new comes out. But for the movies and the specials, for now I'm going to not do anything. Then I'll be back after a few months, maybe like, you know, 5 or 6 months, maybe more than that. I'm not sure when I'll be back. But I'll, I'm going to be back. And what I'm going to do with the movies and the TV specials, I think, is that I will do like a, like a poll every month. Not now, like I said, I'm, I'm going to take a little break now for, from Rupan. At least like six months, I'll take a break. And then from that point onwards, I'll do a poll for like, oh, these movies, like four movies, I'll put on the poll and whichever one gets the most votes, I will react to that movie at the end of the month. So each month, what I'm plan on, planning on doing after taking that little break, each month at the end, you know, I will react to one movie or one TV special. And that's how I'm going to do it. You know, and like I said, if within that some new Rupan season comes out or something related to Rupan happens, you know, I'm going to do that as well. So that is my plan for now. So there you go. That is it. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's been a long journey uh, and I absolutely love Rupan. I love you know, shows like this. And, you know, like, like speaking about Rupan, I, I always was interested in watching Rupan. You know, and then I watched the movie uh, Castle of Cagliostro, and I was like, you know, and I was very much impressed by it. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm doing YouTube. Let me start reacting to Lupin. I started reacting to Lupin with the movies. Then little by little, I went into the uh, the main story, and I absolutely love it now. You know, each and every character is just so interesting. And, you know, like, Lupin and Fujiko are probably one of the most interesting characters I've ever met in anime. You know, it's, it's mind-blowing. These two characters are just so good. Like, like I, I just, like, I, I cannot believe how much I like these two. Like, both Rupan and Fujiko. You know, like, Jigen and Goemon, they're good. Zenigata, they're all good. But, like, I feel like Fujiko and Rupan, my god. Like, I've never met any character like this before in any type. And, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love these two. So, anyways, um, yeah, um, it, it, it has been a great journey. And it's definitely not the end. Like I said, I'll be back. Uh, after a few months doing the movies and the other stuff so for now goodbye i'll be seeing you guys again later um and uh, yeah see you guys after a few months with the movie reactions and all so thanks for watching if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out and there you go that is it thanks for watching um and yeah see you guys later and uh, maybe in some other reactions or when i'm back with rupan again so see you guys then until then goodbye and have a nice day